Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of one of the best limited history series. Series? Serious? Very serious stuff yeah. on mysteries. It's good to be back, isn't it, mate? Yeah. Do you remember in like. New Year Old History? Do you remember in like early noughties, uh R&B songs, you would have got people saying stuff like, it's another one at the start, it's another one. Well, the only person who said another one, DJ DJ Khaled, has that sewn up. Well, he's Craig, the only one saying race to you. Craig David was doing it twenty years before that. No, he wasn't. He was. It's another one. It's another one. Gonna make you make a dance to this. I don't know that one. No. And, I, and I know a lot of Craig like, David. Gonna make you make a dance. This is how it, yeah. Oh no, we're we're we're, in. we're thirty seconds in, and the, and the light of Emperor oh. Vespasius is flashing. <laughs> she still haven't decided to learn his name, even though he fucking, you know, he he bequeathed. Modern stadia of the world. You look again. That could be another medieval name for you. Bequeath. <laughs> <laughs> a bequeath is what I do when I, roll, <laughs> when I roll over in bed and just a wee bit of air just falls out of me. And do you know what you do? You know what bequeath. bequeath does. Do you know what you do? Do you know what you do for the king? You're you're in, you're in charge of the stock in his gravy. <laughs> bequeath. Tis not bequeath. a Sunday unless bequeath has come through. <laughs> bequeath more lamb shanks for the stew. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> oh, the broth of bequeath is the envy of many, many a cook in the empire. Kitchen master, where is bequeath? <laughs> caught, the, caught the bequeath sitting fucking stating turkey legs. Everybody is beneath bequeath. <laughs> As he tries to say that for banter. Where is the Nepalese soy boy? Oh, where is Have it? we sold out? Because it oh, appears to me that there's cans of liquid death where there should be the Nepalese soy boy. Yep. That's horrible to see. Let's, Move them back a little that, bit. Oh, get the, get the there he is. Get the soy boy in there. The Nepalese soy boy. If anyone didn't see the last season of uh, of mysteries, where sometimes you, you just got to pat the head. Sometimes you just got to pat the head of the Nepalese soy boy when someone brings out an unbelievable fact. Yep. And what is it? What, Ken, what is this podcast? Anyway. Today's episode. No, no, I mean in general. All right. All, all these episodes are uh, chances for uh, for Shane and I to go through important historical events and decipher. And what's the word? Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Spread. Separate. Separate. Um, I'll look spread. Never, please don't do that again and make direct eye contact with me. Separate the uh, the fact from fiction, the myth from history, if you will. Hence yeah, yeah I think we're looking at because there's a lot of podcasts out there. There's a lot of history podcasts out there. By the way, so sly to exist in history podcasts. How quickly we climb those charts of the podcast oh, charts. Just like here, just bringing out a pa- few of these. Power <laughs> shooting in like fucking D Day. Oh, there's a historical event for you. You know what I mean? Um, fucking- yeah, I felt bad for existing history podcasts when we. I'd say there's a lot of like guys that. You know, guys and girls that host those kind of podcasts, fuming. Yeah, it's like guys who are sitting there making like a wee, spend all their day making like a fucking new, you know, highly intensely designed tactical shooter and then Call of Duty just goes, bam, yep. there you go. Yep. We're handing you old shit. Here would we Would we fuck up most people who do history podcasts? Would we fuck them up yep. physically? Yeah. Absolutely. I think Dan Snow takes us. I think, oh, here, like mentally? Yeah, phys- physically, I think we, we win that fight. You think we could beat up Dan Snow? I think we could beat him. I think... Calling you out, playboy? You bring, you bring the stamina and athleticism. I bring the raw power of, uh, you know, e I wasn't sure what you bring. I bring, you bring I gravy? Bring, I bring in raw power <laughs> and, and, and a bequeath stew. Yeah. A bespoke bequeath. You know what I mean? That's what I'm bringing you. So uh, what's today's episode about you? Today's... By the way, before we go into today's episode, I know some people just want the history. Before going into today's episode, I think I should you should pat the head of the Nepali soy boy for me being here today. Well done, in fairness. What's the number one reason people pull out of things? Not ready for that big of a commitment. Um no. People pull out of things because of car trouble. That is things like this. My car's broke down. The second no. you hear that, the person's not going to the thing they are supposed to be going to. Do you know what I really wrestled with? And I mean I wrestled with this this morning. Breakfast? It, it was a breakfast <laughs> issue because I, 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 I get up, I get up, I get in. I I literally get up, I get into the car. You have breakfast in the car. Everything. I, like I didn't. I haven't had breakfast. We get into the. We get. I get into the car. We get into the car. Why it's just me. 
Do you know what I get? I get into the car today. This story's with, falling apart. I get into the car quicker than the ancient one, Rome with the One L Studios uh, chef's knife that we used to cut the Doogie's Goodies cake last week. Right. So I look like a psycho getting in the car with a knife and a jumper, right? So get into the car. <clears throat> I'm driving along. It's not it, weird that you were wearing a jumper as well. No, no, I had it in my hand. Oh, right. Just okay. the jumper rolled right. up and a, and a chef's knife. Looked like I'm going to go do some mischief. And then we, we went. Or why do I keep saying we? As if yeah. We, I went to, uh, to to come to Hollywood and I get your message saying, and here on in, in the new car, I get your message. I just press a wee button and it reads it to me. I love that. I've never had anything like this, right? And um, and then it goes, do you want to reply? I'm like, nah, right? But anyway, you, I got your message saying something was wrong. And then uh, when I got the lights, I pressed an wee button and I saw what your message was and uh, that your car broke down. I was Can like, you make a story fuck. longer? Sorry, I was like, for fuck. And then see from there, now I got that message. I, I hadn't even reached Spursfield yet. I got your message and I'm immediately going, go to McDonald's and get a McMuffin. And I wrestled with I, I I drove past four McDonald's on my way here. Yeah. And every one, as I approached them, going, I'll just stop and get a McMuffin. I have time now because Shane's going to be late. Yeah. And I didn't do it, mate. Do you know what that is? Resistance. Well I done. done. I don't think I've done that in well a done. long time. Well done. And you know what the resistance is going to lead to? Resistance training. That's it. Before you know it. Um, that Well done. That's a big, It was a big deal. I mean, I realise, as I'm saying it, it doesn't sound like a big deal. I'll tell you where it was a really big deal. Knock the gunny. Because it's a better big McDonald's because, too. Because, because it was going, I'm I'm actually not only early, like because you were going to be late, mm-hmm. I was even early for the time I was meant to be here for, which never happens. And I'm going, I could maybe nip around there, a couple of hash browns, maybe don't even get a McMuffin. Yep. What if I just go nuts and get five hash browns? That's more psychopath than leaving your house and getting in your car with a knife. I know. And then it's just getting see, hash browns. And I did nothing. And then I just, I drove here, parked the car. And I, and I know that because of the, because I parked quite close to Fosley's van, I had to sort of do this when I was like scooching past and I went, oh, wouldn't have been able to do out of it had them hash burns. <laughs> but then the way I was holding the knife, like a, like a, I know it was because I thought it was a Sorry, can I see you shimmy again? Shimmy Floyd Hasselbeck. There he is. <laughs> Oh, Do you know what it's crazy that your that your head was telling you I should get a McMuffin? You know what's crazy that your head wasn't telling you? Don't get a McMuffin. Offer oh, Shane a lift. <laughs> <laughs> I'm nowhere near you. I'm on the other side of the other side. Doesn't of matter. See if that was me, I'd have come pick. Where you. where were you though? Cross car. M- miles away. That is that is not doable for me. I don't even know how to get there. That's down your fucking killer. Sorry, day. you're you're in a car can do everything, mate. Can't tell you how to get the cross car. I don't know how. I, I know how to vaguely get there, but it's like on the other side. Doesn't matter. Foster, I'd have got, offered you lift before I had the chance to. I, but he was already here. You were but in the. Co- you closer, were in transit. He's closer to it than I was. You were. In, you were in Lisburn, mate. See if I, it doesn't matter. See if it was me. No matter where you were. We had the kind of friendship where I said, "Here, hang tight. I'll come pick what you." What did up. I offer you though? Instead, we day off. That's what I offered you. Don't worry about it, buddy. How quick were you to say that? I know, man. We can shelve it. We can shelve it. <laughs> we can shelve it. Before we get into this episode of Napoleon, and it's not just because I don't know a lot about Napoleon, <coughs> I'm stung for time. A lot of people, if they are trying to say go between two cars and there's not that big of a space, they will breathe in. <gasps> people say that <gasps> breathe in. Best thing you can do. I learned this in uh, from Jackie Chan. Right. Breathe out. See if you That's breathe right. in. <gasps> you're inflating your oh, chest. Wow. You breathe out. <sighs> then shimmy. Less chest. What happens so then? For me, I, there's a possibility that I'll get stuck mid shim either. Yeah. Because if I go to breathe in again, yeah. I've breathed out to get into the shim, and then if I if I <laughs> sorry another medieval name yours mid shimmy. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me say this. Um, we have a live episode of mysteries. It's finally happened. It's going to be in Mandela Hall on the third of March. Uh, tickets may be gone by the time we put this out. We're not too sure when exactly the tickets are going out because we did this episode. We did this episode last year, if you can believe it. Um, uh, so yeah, we're doing that. You, what what can you expect? You expect a, here's what we should do, and I'll say this on the episode: we should bring two subjects, and we should do me bringing us uh, telling Kieran about one thing, and is that what we're going to do anyway? I think so. That's what we're going to we're going to do that anyway. Yeah. You do you do a half, take a break. I do a half. 
And so, can we start with, uh, you know the way we, we didn't have time because the car trouble today, we always start with uh, listening to Michael Bolton, how can we be lovers, oh, we can't be right. friends. Uh, would you, would you perform, can we perform that? Oh, let's perform. To start the pod? Let's to start the pod? To start? To start, Dan. To start the To start the pod. Yeah. They wouldn't do that on another history podcast. To st- what history, what history podcast, you know, throws on a live one at, I'm going to call it, a sold out Mandela Hall and starts with, how can we be lovers if we can't be Tell friends? Tell you who does do that, Dan Snow. No, he doesn't. Well, Early he access tickets tea. on Patreon. Early access tickets on me, Patreon. No the Tea With Me, Patreon, and No Blaster. T- Napoleon. Which one? Dynamite, Bonaparte. Imagine this whole. Imagine I got confused I know, yeah. on the whole episode, and then I had to pretend I knew anything about Napoleon Bonaparte. <laughs> um, Napoleon Bonaparte, uh, who actually changed the spelling of his name Did he? later in life. Yeah, there was a, there used to be a U at the start of it. Oh, Bonaparte. Mm-hmm. Um, but is that true? Yes, I didn't know. That. I know everything about Napoleon. It feels like a good time to do this episode because. The movie Napoleon has just come out starring Joaquin Phoenix, which I used to think was Joaquin, to the point where the real Betis footballer and Spain Joaquin. footballer. Yes, uh, I know that now, but growing up would have called him Joaquin. Yeah, yeah. I uh, watch out for Joaquin. My I Joaquin. definitely, definitely called uh, Joaquin Phoenix Joaquin Phoenix. I once thought Les Ferdinand when I had Premier League stickers, his name was pronounced Lise Frenfield. So there you go. I asked someone if they had a spare <laughs> Lise Frenfield. I thought you were going to go right. for like a, a Lay Ferdinand. You know, no, like that'd be nice yeah. though, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Ferdinand? <laughs> Although what's Lay in French? What? What is Lay in French? Lay, like, uh, oh, like a plural of the. Okay. Like so Lay is in real. These. Anyway, Napoleon Bonaparte. These Ferdinands. <laughs> Rio or Les Ferdinand do not feature in, in the history of Napoleon Bonaparte. What about at all. Anton Ferdinand? Is he in there? <laughs> He's in there. Possibly. <laughs> so, um, what, what, what I think we should do is, because we like to look at the myth of history, I'll give you a bit of a background of the man, right. and then we'll talk about some of the myths that surround him. Right. How's that? I, that sounds That's great. good, isn't it? Sounds good. Sounds like a mix of history and myths. And I find that the best place to learn about a historical figure like this isn't school, isn't the library. It's in a breakdown centre in Cross Car. <laughs> when you're waiting for your wife to come pick you up, because you're so-called one of your best friends, uh, can't find this place that is uh, in the country where he lives. Uh, and he has sat enough in his, uh, frankly, ridiculously expensive car. <laughs> I say car, it's a pickup truck. Obviously, he has a pickup truck because he is not a farmer. Um, anyway. Uh, pick up the pieces of our friendship. Anyway. Um... Let's start with Napoleon. I don't know how much you know about Napoleon. Have you had a chance to see the movie yet? I haven't seen the film yet, but I'm looking forward because I remember how good Gladiator was when Ridley Scott and Joaquin did a wee, wee number Joaquin. together. Yeah. It's it's good that I haven't seen the movie because I would have just based everything about him on the movie, which yeah. is what I do on any historical subject. If we ever do... Um, did, we, did I do William Wallace? Yeah. Okay. Well, we did Robert no. the Bruce. Okay. That's all from Braveheart. My to be fair, ever, from everything Braveheart. I knew about him was from Braveheart. It's from Braveheart, yeah. <laughs> right? You know, he looks an awful lot like Mel Gibson, right? <laughs> um, I actually went to the cinema yesterday to see Paw Patrol, the movie, with my son. Right. And How I saw that? that Napoleon was on, and I was like, you know what? I don't know if he'll enjoy this, because he's three, but that'd be better to go and see, yep. considering what we're doing today. Right, let's go How back. was Paw Patrol? Just uh, After 45 minutes, my son was like, I just want to go. Oh. You know, it's a long time just sit there, isn't it? It's a long time to sit there watching Paw Patrol. I didn't. I thought it was underwhelming, if mm-hmm. I'm honest. Um, so, do you know where Napoleon was born? I thought he was French. I think he's French. He's born in Corsica. Is that what it's called? Yeah, Corsica, which is an island um, off. It's a, fr- it's a French island. Like it's a French island. Mediterranean. In the Mediterranean, so he actually um, grew up not feeling French at all. Right. Um, his family moved so there, did I. and I want to say, <laughs> <laughs> and I want to say something like the 16th century. Anyways, his his, his family moved there. He's from a, a pretty well-to-do family with a history of a bit of dough about them. Yeah, we mm-hmm. bit of cash. Dough uh, part. Yep. <laughs> nice. Nice. First head part of the episode. Um, so, yeah, he, he lives in Corsica, in 
a Jaco or something was called. Is that right? Fuck me, is that right? I managed him football manager once. A Jas, it's like a Jackio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jasio. I do close for big fellas doing it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he he lives there and he he comes over to France for the first time uh, when he's a student as a child. Like S- sixteen, he goes to the military academy. What sixteen, he goes to the military academy. He, what year was he born? 18, 17, 69, 17, 69. 17, oh, right, 69. okay, so he fully went, he fully was an adult then when the revolution happened then? Yes. Right. Now, the first time he goes to France, he describes himself feeling like a foreigner. So I think when you look at his story and all the history, myths, legend about him, you assume this guy, absolutely, this, this is the most famous French person probably of all time, right? Him and Arcantina? I mean, it's definitely up there. It's, and, it's him and maybe a And Stromae? Allo dance, boom boom boom, boom <laughs> allo dance. Mm-hmm. Strome Napoleon. I think Sash is more famous. No, is he French? I don't know. Let's not get into the world yeah. of old school dance. Yeah, yeah, because it's about to come into this story yeah. <laughs> so quickly. Um, so yeah, he he goes to uh, like military academy in France, but feels like a foreigner, and you would assume from everything about him that this guy grew up feeling French and then this is the most uh, you know French person you can imagine but it's not like that at all and he actually has his own ideas um, about France about the way it should be ran um, and at this time there's no focus you know when you think about France back then what's that Liberté Egalité yep Liberté Egalité Fraternité which means what freedom equality and what was the other one brotherhood well, that is not the case when he's a young man and he's growing up after the French Revolution. Like, that's not the case at all. But he has all these ideas of what he would do. But growing up and, and going to the military academy and then getting into the army, he's he's not headed for the top. Mm. It's not like he's in, he's getting fast-tracked to the top like a lot of people would. And actually, that is something years later he kind of brings in that when you join the army, there's nothing stopping you going way up. Right. You know, because, you know, a lot of countries, like, you can only go to a certain level yeah. if you're the best soldier in the world. You're only, it's yeah, for, like, it's if for, you're, like if you were um, not from, say, like a noble family or something, you can only rise this. One of the like, things yeah. he gets rid of. Um, so he, he ends up um, fighting in Italy for France. And at this point, the French are trying to push into a lot of Europe. You know, um, Italy, Austria, um, fighting with Russia, I want to say. Um but he, it's one of those ones, and you read this about loads of people in the first season of people that we researched for this, they always, like, it was so turbulent in governments and in armies because everyone, you'd be like, he did this and then he he deserted or he resisted and he ended up going to jail for a while and then he comes back. They always, everyone that we read about seems to just, they're a year in jail here, they get kicked out of here, every... I think because of coups and every, everything changed so fast. Yeah. Um, it's like Gino de Campo, just cheeky two years inside, nobody knows. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know about this? I only got told about this maybe a week ago, and that's mental that I was only discussing this a yeah. week ago. You broke into someone's house or something? Paul Young's house. You know, no. the singer. Sands yeah. Donna? Yeah. And <laughs> By the way, the other guy did the heavy lifting in that song. Yeah. <laughs> This is he, so uh, he, he broke into Paul Young's house and stole guitar. Since Unadana, uh-huh. no more pain uh-huh. and no uh-huh. sorrow. By the way, how much? There must have been an early version of that that Paul Young put out and gave to like record execs, and they were like, "It's his book." I just sit, watch the ocean. Since Unadana, and they're like, "Paul, it's good." And then he went, "I know this well." And this guy yeah. comes up, no more pain <laughs> and no sorrow. <laughs> You know what that is? It you know what that like is? That's a gravy on the that's a gravy on the Sunday roast. <laughs> it sounds like you way you did that. It sounds like fucking Scarface is doing it like. Say hello to no more pain. In <laughs> but uh, yes. anyway, yes, that's important to establish. Gino de Campo broke into Paul Young's house. Anyway, mm, two years in jail. Okay, I anyway. love Gino. <laughs> okay, Sorry, go ahead. I feel like Paul Young deserves more your sympathy in that story. <laughs> anyway, um, but you could have said. I don't know. Anyway, I'll say this. Um, he he keeps kind of returning to Corsica at different parts of this story as well um, because I think they're not aligned up to the central French way of thinking. Mm-hmm. Um, but he keeps nipping over there quite a bit. Um, <coughs> he sort of keeps rising 
Dan, if I leave out anything important or you want to jump in with anything, just do it. But he keeps like kind of climbing the ranks and people like him within like military and government. But he does have some kind of radical ways of thinking mm. or he kind of threatens the way the government is because he is so like ambitious and he has this idea of France and it does involve like equality and he, he doesn't love the nobles and things like that. So the people within government kind of want to keep him at arm's length while recognising he's a good soldier um, but but his ambition they don't like his ambition so yeah his first sort of the crucial role was he recaptured Toulon from the British forces right which and you know because they've been they've been trying to get that back for, for too long too long <laughs> no more pain and no sir so when when was um, that? So was that this, was, is this pre revolution? This is uh, seventeen ninety three, so oh, I believe that's so everything that happens in You're this in is after the revolution. Well right, he was okay. at military academy, I think, during the revolution, was in right. Paris and actually played some part in sort of he was in Paris at times and led forces. Oh right. Okay. Um but then came out in sort of sixty three to sixty seven, he led successful campaigns in Italy. Um and that's sort of what brought him to prominence against the Austrians. Ninety three. Yeah, 17, so 1793 was Toulon, right. then 1796 to 7 was against Austrian and Sardinian forces, and that's right. what really brought him to prominence. And he was offered a role, and I, it was some, it was something to do with Italy. He was going to be like their guy in Italy, in charge of something, but he didn't think it, it was kind of going to go... <laughs> he was going to be their guy in Italy in charge of somebody. That, was, want the, that was the title. <laughs> they said... <laughs> Will you be our guy in Italy? <laughs> you know he's going to be the guy in Italy, but he didn't. Um, he didn't want that. It's just funny because he thought it he was going to be in charge of something. <laughs> <laughs> I heard the one that it's a bit vague. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the job description is here. Just go to Italy. You're in charge of stuff. That's sweet. Oh, that's really funny. I would love that job. <laughs> You want to be the guy in Italy? I would love to be the That'd guy. Be great! In Italy. Oh, seriously, I love it there. Um, I can see you in white linens walking around oh, Italy. Mate, I love Italy. Yeah. I, I fit in there. I do. I don't fit in in many places, but I fit in Italy. Like they love it. Italy? Yeah. No. I do. I do. I'm. I'm very Mediterranean. I want to go there. I am, mate. I fit in. Like seriously, mm. just the way I dress and all. Right. Um. So. Yeah, he, they go, do you want to be the guy in Italy? He says, it doesn't align with my ambitions. It's not really, it's not really going anywhere, that job. Um, and he ends up like, different people are sort of trying to bring him into government. But he, instead of that, he goes back to Paris. And he, he's basically, he's basically going there to say to the government, listen, I'm a, I'm, I'm a top boy. Like, mm. You know, he wants to. Is this before or after the Egyptian campaign? This is way before. Okay. So, so he's going there to basically state his credentials, and he goes, "Listen, bump me up here." You know what I mean? It's like almost like, uh, like X Factor boot camp. Right. Okay. He's going back, and he's like, "This is," he's really going for it. Sends in a Donna. Right. He's belting that out. Right. Um, and Dan, let's not get hung up on timeline, but um, and exactly on this, when on this history podcast and when things happen. But yeah, he 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 fights another war. He goes to Egypt. Yeah, he gets offered the chance to fight the British because they're like, someone could take on them, but he decided that the Navy the Navy's too strong in Britain, so he doesn't want to lose to them. But he, he'll go to Egypt. But he but that's what he says. He goes, we need to we need to control the seas. He goes, you're not, if you're not controlling the seas, you're not going to win out there. They need to extend their empire to challenge the British Empire, so Egypt was first on his list. So he says, here we'll go. Now, part of me thinks he's sinking 30 degrees out there or whatever. Bit of a... Bit of a tan. So he fights in the War of the Nile, the Battle of the Nile, against none other than who's that fella? Big British guy. Was it Nelson? Nelson. Nelson at... Big Nelson. Lord Admiral. And he, uh, he. Not at this point, I don't think. No. He, but, he's yeah. just a guy at that point. Just, just, just some guy. The guy. He was Nelson. the British guy in Egypt. Um, T. <laughs> T B G I E <laughs> he yeah, was. Yeah. And um he I don't know anything about Nelson, so let's do you do an episode on him sometime. Okay. Um and he but he, he wins uh-huh. pretty Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> he wins pretty easily. And um Battle of the Nile? Yeah. Who wins? Nelson. The British. Nelson. Oh sorry. 
this is going to come way after. Sorry, I, I, I've got swayed. Um, it, the love him. Swayed. He's getting all these promotions. Okay, we'll just go straight to that. Yes, he loses that battle, but when he comes home, kind of because it happened in Egypt, this is there's a couple of times he loses battles, right? This guy has all the luck in the world, Napoleon, right? right? He wins pretty much everything he's part of, bar Egypt, and there was one more, but because these happened almost so far away, they're almost forgotten about. He's also good at writing his own reports on what's happening, and right. when he wins, he'll like talk everything up. And he sends his report back to like the people of Paris, so they start to love him for that. Right. And when he loses, he just sort of ignores it. So, right. so, so actually, what they were scared of, the government at the time and people in power at the time, is how ambitious this guy is, how good he is. That all starts to come true because he's writing his own history and the people of his popularity. Like he, he, he becomes om- he's already becoming almost like a myth. Already, while he's still alive, right. because he's documenting his own history, right. and he's the only person really to do that, and that's why he is st- one of the reasons why he's still so talked about now is because there is so much like source m- material, documents stuff, yeah. and and record because he was writing it, which is uh, smart. You yeah. know what I mean? This guy, by the way, did not jump ahead. Wrote his own basically autobiography at the, like. When he when he was exiled, which obviously we're gonna we're gonna talk about, was written by him and Dumfrey. <laughs> <laughs> Forward by Stromae. Um but yeah, he, he so he he wins some, he loses some. But what he's great at is he'll go in somewhere and he'll just make you sign a treaty. Yeah, he will make you sign a treaty, no matter who you are. And uh, Austria are one of the people that they were. He was really beefing with at the start, mm-hmm. and I didn't know they were doing a lot. Austria, yeah. The Austro-Hungarian Empire. All that sort of shit. Don't know anything about that. Um, but yeah, he was fighting a lot with them. Um, obviously Britain. But he he's in Italy a lot. And he, he's basically, this, this guy's treaty coming out. Treaty's coming out of his ears. Right. He makes you sign a treaty. That's what he does. He makes you sign a treaty. Um, also, he's putting it about a wee bit as well. Put more about a few as well. Fir- yeah. Right. Which... Is bone a part? Is bone a part? Which in later years... After an autopsy, was cut off and toured around the world. Basically, people got really into Napoleon's cock. Walt did yeah. a world tour. Yeah, I can't even do a fucking it world en- tour. It ended up in New York in the nineteen twenties. I want to say on like a, 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 in an Napoleon exhibition. Wanger, like, I pay to see it. I wouldn't. I'll look at it for free. Do you have pictures? One of the most notable men throughout history. I, I, I look at his cock. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, it, it would be interesting to see. Well, what's the word of his cock? Like, what's the what's the talk? You know, what's was the he, talk was, of his cock? Yeah, like I mean, like you know, is he hung like a shower horse or like a fucking cashew? Because I'm gonna say I I I don't know. I I know there's an, a Wikipedia page devoted entirely to his to his uh, his member his member, um, and I don't know what the word is on its size or lengthwise, but um. Basically, like yeah, people were just Jack. people were really into it. People were buying, like people were buying it. No, you know what I mean. It was getting auctioned, and you can auction Napoleon's car. Well, I don't know who has it now, but so uh, a urologist, an artifact collector named John K. Latimer, purchased the item in 1977 for three grand. Yeah. That's three cheap. grand. That's cheap for Napoleon's cock. For anyone's cock, that's cheap. No, it I is. get your cock way cheaper than three grand. Yeah, but you can't keep it. <laughs> <laughs> like you, you get you're talking about getting somebody like a rent boy or you something. You can't land it. No, I mean just a standalone cock. Well, you can like a, like a human one. Yeah, what? less than three grand. No. I guarantee. Oh my god. No. You will say. See three, by the three grand. By the end cheap. of today, I'll get you. How much? How much? You, what? What are you budgeting for this? I get you a cock for five hundred pound. Honestly, a human cock. Yeah. I don't want it, but like if you could, I want you to prove that you can get me. Weirdly, you don't want to keep it. You want it, but you don't. Want, you want to give it back. You want to rent it. I want to rent it. Want, want, rent it. Yeah. Um, a documentary which aired in Channel Four, Dead Famous DNA, described it as very small. Really? Because that's one thing we want to talk about as well. Obviously, is his height. Well, maybe he was a grower, not a shore, like, and people are giving him shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. I get you, buddy. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> it's not fair. Um, he. This is my first liquid death, by the way. I've never had it. Right, basically, he's he, he fights a load of wars. Egypt doesn't go well. He loses another one. But also, I'll tell you this, he, he makes himself emperor of France. 
So can we jump back to 1799 quickly? Please. Yep. Um, it's going to take a so while, yeah. staged a coup uh, in November overthrew the French government. The, like France was in a bad state at this point. After like the revolution, yeah. Like, prices have ever gone up, inflation, all that kind Looking of stuff. Looking after the rich. So the people weren't happy, but they loved Napoleon because of all his victories throughout Europe. Um, so he was tiny fucking walnut whip. Yeah. So he helped overthrow the government and then set in place a new government, which had called was ruled by I think was it three or five people called the director. Three. But it was basically him. He was the head guy, um, and then in 1804 he crowned himself Emperor of France. And the reason the reason that's... for that is that wasn't just a. That wasn't just indulgence or vanity. It might have been a bit, but he was worried that people just kept trying to assassinate him. You know, people from within. So yeah. he, so they were. Be, so what he was advised by one of these other two guys is that were that were his sort of counsel was if you become emperor, it's just your bloodline. So even if they kill you, they're not going to be able to take yeah. the, the the power themselves. It's so sort you of keep interesting it in the how much that's like a, a Roman emperor, though, isn't it? Well, well, that was a big fascination of his growing up. Was like Julius Caesar and the whole Roman emperor, em- Empire. Maybe that's why he wrote the the reports because Caesar did that when he conquered Gaul. Well, wrote yeah. the Campari. That's, ex- that's exactly why he did it because he he wanted like legacy. Mm. He wanted posthumous fame, kind of. And, and when he when he had the coronation for himself, um, he a- everyone thought it was a bit weird because his whole ethos kind of was going against like the rich and all this kind of thing. But he wanted his coronation to be like the biggest of all time. Wow. So they brought the Pope over. And that's someone he, he, he'd kind of warred with. But he'd, he'd had a little yeah. bit of a run-in with the Pope before. And How every- would you not love to be at that level? You're having wee rows with a Pope and all. <laughs> yeah. you know, like, Nowadays you'd be on Twitter and all. And just texting him being like, will you fuck up? Yeah. Um, at the last minute though, he doesn't let the Pope put the crown on his head. He sort right. of puts it on himself. By the way... Not into religion at all. Another thing about him. Really? Yeah, not imagine, into it. But imagine he... burning the Pope though with a wee, you know, wee WhatsApp. Yeah. You know, send them send them like a wee gift or something. You know. Yeah. Like when the Pope says something, you send them a, a gift of a rhino taking a shake. Go yeah. here, lick your lips. <laughs> Take a shake, do you, Pope? <laughs> More over Pope McCrown. I'm actually I'm gonna do it. He did. He did, however, um, believe that there there should be like religion in France because he thought that would be a better way to rule. But actually. At one point, one, uh, he wanted to be a Muslim, and he was going to. Uh, one of the times he kind of never heard of that. Either. Yeah, one of the times he kind of got exiled back in the day, or or sh- shooed away. He was going to offer his services to the Sultan of Turkey. He's like, I'll just go and be his mate. Wow. But anyway, um, they the Battle uh, of Waterloo is where he uh, fucks it. Right. Okay. Right, so they shots against the British. Well, it? they had peace with the British, and Great then song. what? Oh, my my, at Waterloo, Napoleon did surrender. I've never known the lyrics of that bar, no. Waterloo. There you go, Waterloo. Couldn't escape if I wanted to. Am I making that up? No, no, no. Waterloo. Um. <laughs> Sorry. So he loses at the Battle of Waterloo. Um. We've jumped a few battles at this point. Okay. <coughs> He's having battles against Austria and Russia. Probably his most famous at Austerlitz. One well, of his greatest victories. I happen to know that there was an old bastard who taught music in St. Anne's Primary. Whenever I was... He would come in once or twice a month and take a wee music lesson. And he taught us a song about Napoleon. That went... They called him Boney. And he goes... And this is an old bastard, by the way. Just in the 90s, going with a wee guitar, going... Boney beat the Prussians way, uh. Boney beat the Russians way, uh. Boney beat the Austrians way, uh. And then I can't remember what the last line was, which is probably... Barnard? And then he fucked it at Waterloo. <laughs> Couldn't escape. Send <laughs> 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 Um, Yeah, you're right, Dan. He had a load of other battles, didn't he? So, is yeah. that where he took the fucking French Empire to? That's not bad. Like, so yeah, and he, as Shane was saying, he puts all these treaties together, basically stopping people trading with Britain or England um, right. to try and sort of reduce their power. So he did all these treaties and he had all this power. He makes a lot of kings. He just give you, see if you know him, he just let you go and be, if you're in his family, you know, he just let you go and be a king somewhere. He'd take over a place and then he goes, here, you're a king. That's what people don't realise about him is that he was obsessed with money as well as 
just fighting wars so all his as Shane says all his relatives got decent jobs and right. you know there was coin flying about jobs for the boys and see Spain is that under his control as well oh why uh, yeah ruled by his brother or stepson according right. to his right. brutal like as in not brutal as in like just really bad right at his job right Um, he was shit um, so I, 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 there's obviously loads of cover in him I want to just take it forward to like when he gets when he loses do you want to do the Russian bit first, or do you want to jump straight to Waterloo? Well, what I know about the Russian thing is that's where the um, the phrase, and this is a myth or history, mystery or history, the whole phrase Napoleon complex. You know, so what, what's your take? What do you know by that phrase when someone says Napoleon that Napoleon complex that he was a small person who had to overcompensate for being short and being looked down on his whole life by. Quick Fucking temper, like, yeah, and by and by like being showing like, how strong he is, basically being a wee a wee dick. Like yeah, it's being about overly like aggressive. Yes, putting your head down, just run into something without yeah. thinking. But the, the, first of all, a um, myth about Napoleon was not that small, right? Complete average height for a French man of his time. What what height was he? Do you know? I don't know. Five six. Five, well, here at short. I think well, yeah, average average back in the day, was five five or five seven. Like he was average within height an inch for, of it. Yeah, because they used to talk about five eights was. The average height of Irish people at this time, and they were considered to be big. I think it was five seven was maybe the average height in France, and so. Right. Um. So he wasn't that small. Plus, he had already warred with Russia twice before, so he didn't just like. He didn't did he, just. Did make... he look smaller because he used to wear a big stupid fucking sideways hat? And also, he did wear that hat because that's another thing people go. Has this just become like you know, yeah, like, like Vikings wearing like horns on yeah, their like helmets? Yeah, the Sherlock Holmes hat. Yeah. He d- he d- he did wear that. And he did wear a big coat. You know what didn't help him either historically now is Bill and Ted's adventure, Napoleon and that. Right, okay. Super small, super ugly. I think that's what people He was. He was, do you know what he was? He's fine looking. He was unremarkable. Right. The, he, although his hair was a wee bit sort of... Is this... Was it loose? Did the Russian winter fuck him? So yeah, so thing? basically he went to... I think Russia started trading. They broke the treaty. And so he went... His idea was to take... I think it was like 600,000 men... And Jesus. marched into Russia, but not go too far. 615,000. Oh, sorry. Uh, and what the Russians did was like retreat in front of him. Right. So he ended up going all the way to Moscow, but they sort of did the sort of burnt earth, scorched mm. earth, sorry, and just destroyed everything. And they just have, he kept going further and further in, and then the winter hit them and fucked them. Do you know what's mental? That's exactly, like, literally, that's what happened to the German army, like, in, in the 40s. Scorched earth as far as fucking Stalingrad, and then. Fuck them on the way back out though, just because, cause fucking Russian winter, mate. Don't fight it, don't fight it, enjoy it. A I, great song. I think he lost four hundred thousand men, and most of them through dysentery and uh, exposure. Imagine dying fighting. of the shits in the middle of a Russian snowfield. Uh, mm-hmm. Do you know how on twank that is? Like that. It's not the uh, way you want to go out, no. No. I want to be a wee cosy. Oh, I hate that. You will be. Trust me. I hate that. Oh, that's awful. Imagine Um, literally, imagine like being in the middle of a Russian cornfield and there's snow everywhere and they've burnt anything good out of it as well. And then you go, and then you get that pain in your tummy where you go, I'm going to literally shit myself to death. Yeah. Oh, it's so grim. Yeah. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. And you're a wee French guy and you should be fucking sitting having cheese. Yeah, on the Sean's I mean, the worst day, it, like, if you've got the shits, it's the worst thing it, you can have. Isn't it? <laughs> it fucking is as well. Um, so I, I got a fa- There's too, now too much to fit in. Sorry, when vaguely did that? When when did he when did he lose in Russia? Eighteen twelve. Right, and then is Waterloo eighteen fifteen? Yeah, yeah. Right. So he gets um, after Russia, he gets his first exile. And gets sent to the island of Elba. No idea where that is. I've I've Idris. I've read about Elba. Okay. About, nice. Sorry Some about actor. about him, about him being on that island. It's like a prison island, yeah. but it's sort of like house arrest. Like it's not like he's not doing, He's not doing like hard time. He's playing there. tennis. Yeah, it, it's it's Wolf of Wall Street. He's loud as phone. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um. And then didn't he? So was this? Did he go to Elba twice? But the. No, he goes. He escaped. Late. I know he escapes. Escapes, he escapes and goes back to Paris. Um, right. Starts the hundred day. Is it hundred day war or something? Mm. 
which is then you can pick up with Waterloo at that point. Well, also, let's fit in here that, he, see when he's in power, he's changing everything. Right. Education reforms, uh, social reforms, even like building like bridges, like really advanced bridges for their time. Right. Um, he's he's just very, very... Cause Proactive. He's a tactician, like military tactician. He's got all that nailed. He knows how to talk to people. He's very popular, but also like very intelligent as well and, ver and knows how to come across popular with the people. <coughs> so everybody loves him. Establishes the Napoleonic Code, which yes. is still used today in a lot of sort of places. What's that? It's like um, a code of sort of a civil code. Right. That like a lot of modern day democracies are based on. No parking on double yellows. Yeah. Don't yeah. take a shit in the alleyways. Yeah. All that. <laughs> he, um, right, so anyway, Battle of Waterloo. Well, I, I want to talk more about the myths around him. So I'm just going to fast forward and say, when he loses that, he thinks in his head, and this is so you and probably me, he thinks the British are just going to take him to like live in Britain. In like a really nice like big a country house. house. No, 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 not a wee house. He he's like, I'm gonna I'm gonna be living out in the countryside, big house, and I'll be under house arrest. But they're gonna send around all these politicians and famous people. We'll have a drink together and we'll talk about you know what's happened. He's killed hundreds of thousands of like British soldiers and stuff. <laughs> but he's like, listen, they'll give me a wee slap on the wrist, you know. But he you'd have done it to me. He thinks he's gonna yeah. be holding court. Yeah, right? they say uh, he also thinks he's, he he also thinks worst case scenario they're gonna send him to America, right? Cause that's where his brother ended up uh, going. But he thinks, all right, I'll go to America. Sure. Imagine that now, like some yeah. politician just going, listen, yeah, killed hundreds of thousands of you. What do you mm -hmm. want me to do? But coming after dinner speaker <laughs> Boris Johnson. See if it was nowadays, he'd be on cameo. <laughs> yeah, right. That's yeah. in his head. He'd be going, I'll make a few quid from cameo. This will be all right. <laughs> It doesn't work out like that. <laughs> they say to him, listen mate, we're sending you to an island. And he goes, happy days, he's probably thinking Tenerife or something. Right. He goes to St. Dan? St. Helena. St. Helena. The second most like remote island in the world. Right. When he gets there, right, look at it here. Where, where is that? Right in the middle of the South Atlantic. Oh. When, right between South America and Africa. And see, when you get there, there's two like six hundred feet mountains, and then there's just like a little bit of a a little bit of a cove type thing leading leading you into it. No Wi-Fi. The, no Wi-Fi at all. This place is so high up that you he's, most of the year you're in the clouds, so it's sticky, it's damp, it's dark. It does sound shit, like they have a house. So you basically they basically go. Let's make with a gaff for you here, right? With a proper like. Pla not palatial but with a nice yeah. house but it was built with all the wrong materials right so a, cl a cloud house there's mould there's damp and he's allowed to bring 29 people with him basically allowed to bring a few mates and they stay loyal to him he's, br he's brought everybody from the Paris comedy scene <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so they they stay like loyal to him he's there and the 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 Man who's like in charge of him, uh, hates him. Is a nightmare to him. Who's just some English guy? Sir, um, fuck. British person. He's a he's a British guy, yeah. but hates him, right? Um, and like he, 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 you could say, yeah, he's in exile, and he 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 he's he's got this island almost to himself. Mm. But Sir, Sir Hudson Lowe. Sir Hudson Lowe. Sir, Sir Hudson Lowe. That's Lowe. him. Yeah. Bastard. They end up coming like okay at the end, but when he's living there, they have this thing where he's he's like playing cards and stuff. The place that he's in is that damp that at the end of the night when they finish playing cards, they got to put the cards in the oven to dry them out. For fuck's sake! It's damp. That's no. That's abs That's absolutely melting. That melts me even knowing about that. Do you know what it's like? So you book this Airbnb and you think it looks unreal, like we did in Mallorca. Yeah, like Earlier I did in, the in year. fucking California. But we thought this place looked brilliant. I don't know, it wasn't that bad, but tricks photography. It was see, nowhere near as big yeah, as they had well, made see, it seem. See the one that we got the, the, in fucking LA. 
it didn't even have locks on any of the doors. Uh, all the doors were closed with like wooden wedges. And I said, to the guy, what's the crack individually or the main outdoor? The, to get out? including the the main doors of the house, no locks. And I went, dude, that's not safe. Like, and he goes, and it was a Russian guy. And I swear to God, so he lame. That just because you're in America, you're calling people, dude. I hate that. <sighs> Dude, I actually went, bro. Dude, this is not chill, bro. Yeah. I I totally don't know what you're doing to me right yeah. now. Yeah, And I said, I said to him, uh, Kawaponga. I go, <laughs> I said to him, as I was like, dude, yeah, you're totally fucking with my safety, bro. Yeah. Right? And he goes, uh, he says to me, this is a Russian guy. I swear to God, he said this. You can pick luck. You cannot pick wood. <laughs> and I went, you know what? I'm way to holiday in. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> True story. Mental. So imagine. I'm sorry. Imagine he can't this. go to holiday. He doesn't have that luxury. Imagine at this time. There's no the, holiday in San Marino. Your playing cards are probably that's that's your laptop. Yeah. You know what I mean. That's yep. your fuck. That's your that's your iPad. Yep. And you've to fucking cook it every night. Yep. Uh, yeah. Uh, the, uh. There's mold. There's there's rats. There's there's everything. If so. that's how if that's how wet they are, was though. How wet was it, if you know what I'm saying? What was wet? Uh, what? Isn't there that story about, about Napoleon's wife where he, she wanted him to buck her or something on the eve of some great battle and he's meant to say, not tonight, Josephine. Isn't that a thing? Uh, and there was the other one, did you tell me this, where he, he, he wrote her a letter. He's basically like on his way back from battle and he said, uh, I'm on my way back, I'll be there in two days. Don't bathe. But that isn't as it sounds. Apparently, like, they didn't bath all the time. This is what I'd heard. So what he meant was, don't bath between now and then. But like when you see me coming back, jump in the bath, give it oh, a clean, right. give it a clean. I thought it meant, I like you know, don't bathe because I like it pickled. You know what I mean? I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna come back and show you a sweet fucking bony bit. Je veux dire un pickle. <laughs> <laughs> um. <sighs> So, he, anyway, anyway, on his exile on this island, he's writing flat out. That's why we have so much history. Right, okay. But it's, com- I mean, it's coming from him, but like, he's re- he's also writing like fiction <coughs> out there. He, that sounds like a, he sounds like a name, he sounds like you. He's always publishing works and doing <laughs> things. And... Also, at the height of his power, when he was like traveling all around Europe in battles, he used to get each night a report on... France, what had happened that day in France. Right. So there's somewhere in Paris now which has like 30,000 documents that just oh, wow. tell that's what happened. Cool. So that's why we have so much information about I, that time. I think he's a bit like Drake nowadays. He's putting out loads and loads, mm. like 30 album, 30 track albums. Yeah. And you're like... They can't all be bangers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, can we go back to like, you know, uh, headlines, the motto... It's Marvin's fucking, room. Do you know what? That is weird because I don't know a lot about him, but it is. Oh, yeah. th- it's sort of like distinctly Roman stuff, though, like Roman style. Like the, well, he's heavily the, influenced the, by the, that. The keeping of records in yeah, that yeah, way, yeah. that sort of fastidious yeah. kind of. Yeah. Well, he wants he wants his legacy to live on. Yeah. Um, he is he he is it six or seven years, Dan? You make he, I think it's six years. Six years in the fucking dump. Yeah, uh, he dies of uh, cancer. The, 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 here's another well, myth. He just fucking went there and died. That's it. Yeah. Fuck up, Napoleon. There's bound to be some. I thought we were gonna do a bit like where he got fucking buried North Belfast or something. Like Napoleon's nose. Well, he got buried um, there on the island, but he, he in his will he wanted to be. Uh, I think he wanted to be cremated and put, or not cremated, but he wanted his but his remains to go to the banks of the River Seine to be in Paris among his people. Little did he know, some cunt two hundred years later be paying three grand for his cack. <laughs> you know what I mean? So he um he wants this, but they say no. But um relations like after his death, relations between France and Britain become way better, right. and they actually team up. For the Crimean War, right. So because of that, he, they allow his Britain allow his body to come back to France. Right. Okay. Uh, but it it doesn't go to the banks of the same. But he is buried in in, in France, and um. And then what? Then his son then fucking take over. Some there was a couple of Napoleons then after him. His, his son was also called Napoleon. His great nephew, I think, was Napoleon the third, mm. and at this point. Uh, is just appointed because of his name. Like right. no one's like him. But, but he is. Um, Daniel, if I've left anything out, I'll say this: 
he he is like one of the most iconic famous people in history when you say yeah. these great men of history and largely it is because he just documented it all mm. you know it's like nowadays like jumping on all these in- Instagram for a story and people have just saved those you it's know? just like uh, the more more content you put out the bigger the numbers uh, he's, he was saying that a clip every day that's Napoleon's way he was saying that back then Yeah, content is the king no- the Napoleonic Code here jump on Patreon yeah. <laughs> patreon.com forward slash Bonaparte <laughs> so here what about what see do, do you know do we know any more I don't know loads about Waterloo but I just know it was a big naval battle and that was was that against Nelson as well yes and Nelson do we know anything about that well sorry for a sec I think it was 14 years after his exile or his death that France and Britain were fighting together right. so actually he was the one who kind of somehow despite that battle brought them together right okay um, what about being exiled? Must be sort of shit. Purg- it's like purgatory. That's why. Yeah. That's why it's said. And he was in that place that was so remote to kind of punish him and to make sure that he couldn't escape. And some and that guy Hudson Low just had to hang out with. Him. Imagine being that guy. Yeah. I mean, he's also sort of being punished, then, isn't he? Do you know what he? Do you know what I think in my mind he would do, Sir Hudson Low? I think he would. Uh, he'd be cooking like an unreal dinner smells going all around the house yeah. and all and because it's so damp the smell's really carrying yeah. and he's like oh this is lovely and then he'd, he'd be prepared in front of yeah. Napoleon and Napoleon's starving and then he would just give Napoleon we we make grave lasagna yeah or he gives he gives Napoleon the fucking smelly fat bit off his his sirloin steak yeah you know what I mean while he eats the fucking meat so I think Trafalgar was the naval battle right okay Waterloo remember the end of Sharp did you ever watch Sharp yeah the final battle sharp. the final series of that's Waterloo so it's like in uh, modern day Belgium. Sorry, so Trafalgar is the thing I'm thinking of. Yeah. Correct. Is it also, is that in the same year? Or is that the year before? I can't remember um, when Trafalgar was. But yeah, there there are a lot of myths and people are, like you just said before, Dan, I think now that the movie, is, the Ridley Scott movie has come out, people are saying that's not historically accurate at mm. all. But you kind of don't expect that to be. Yeah. Not always the case. Trafalgar was 1805. Against Nelson? Yeah. Right. And then, so he's fighting on our 10 years to lose a water. Well, well no, he gets all that his first exile away. and then, yeah. like, he's only back for 100 days and that ends at Waterloo. Right. And that, okay. So he's only back for a short time. And then here's a really <laughs> stupid I can get emotional about it. It's totally, totally irrelevant nearly, but why did Terry Henry get away with that handball? No, what what was the what when when was uh Wellington? When was he was he later so he, in this? No, no, he was he was that, that was Wellington was his like adversary at Waterloo. Right, so Wellington does Waterloo, Nelson does Trafalgar. Right. Yeah. I'm sitting here going, Also Wellington's the guy the boats are named after, true story. Um the Louisiana the purchase. To say, like, Napoleon's, like... 1803. The, the impact that it's had on today's world. Yeah. Like, sells 800,000 square miles of America to America for, yeah, like... Yeah, from France. $15 million. It, it, 1803, Louisiana Purchase, yeah. And they still, a lot of... Not a lot. Some parts of Louisiana speak French, no? That's right, yeah. C- French Cajun. Speak. Imagine yeah. imagine being imagine being such a baller that you're ram with a pope you know, flicking a bit of shit at, at the English and then just turn around to America and go, here, I'll sell you back some of your own shit. Yeah. Pay me. But it's already, you, you're already in it. And then you know I mean? that's about a, in a fucking That's like me selling you that, that cardigan. It is. For 15 quid now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's how good he was. <laughs> I sell you a cardigan. Where is it? You're wearing it. <laughs> you're already wearing it. That's how convenient <laughs> is that? I make me some gumbo. <laughs> Oh no! So um, I, I by the way to finish this off, I don't know the myth about the nose. Why is in Cave Hill? Why is Cave Hill, which people don't know, um, it's a mountain in in Belfast, like a big rock, basically. Yeah, we call it Napoleon's nose because it looks part of it looks has like a. But did I, he have I that th- big hooter? I think he's meant to have a nose that does that. You know where it comes out like that and then down. 
Right, right, like right, that right, right. Of, like that bit of KFL, so we all call it in the Pogans. Like, things. he'd be sad, I'm sure, if he, he could somehow find that out years later. Go, well, what are they named after better, me? Go, better There's a mountain in Belfast, bro. It looks like your snout. I know, but better to have Napoleon's nose in Belfast than Napoleon's cock in the hand of some private collector. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe that. If this series goes the way I think it does, do we at the end try and make an offer for it? I don't know where it is or who has it. Here. Wouldn't it be lovely to just have Napoleon's cock? Do you know what I would love to do? Bring Napoleon's cock out at the live event. <laughs> I, w- Even like, if we can get a land of yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Rent- that would be lovely. A wee rental of Napoleon's Walt. Yes. You know what I mean? People can do a meet and greet with it in the foyer of Mandela. <laughs> a meet and greet. <laughs> Me- Gre- M-E-A-T. I to say, <laughs> greet the meet. Yeah. Oh, mate, that's mental. Yeah, so, people can give it a wee. A lot of the sort of characteristics of Napoleon, which people get wrong, like the height and the big nose, it's because a lot of the early cartoonists were starting at this time. Right. So James Gilray. Right. It was like a British cartoonist and they would like be writing for the Times or whoever and do these caricatures of Napoleon. Propaganda. It's pro- propaganda, yeah, yeah, big Which time. then makes him look oh, like oh. a midget with a big nose. Let me tell you something else. Um, Hitler visited Napoleon's uh, tomb and said, I think it was like the greatest day of his life. And there is a huge myth around the fact that a lot of people then, because Hitler said that, saw Napoleon as this like early Hitler or like the first version of Hitler. Wow. In truth... To break the myth, which is what we like to do, nothing like Hitler really at all. Okay, battles, a lot of people dead, but here's a big difference. Um, you know, yeah. <laughs> boys will be boys, right? <laughs> but I'll say this: when Napoleon visited uh, different ghettos in Europe, um, where where Jewish people were living like below like the living standard, mm-hmm. he liberated a lot of those kind wow. of areas, and he made sure that. Uh, Jewish people in, in, in certain parts of Europe had like equal, uh, the same rights as everybody else well, and if he had a treaty he, that you know that's part of it you treat everybody the, that, that uh, liberty egalite thing yeah. you know, treat everybody the same so that so that's a key difference so that's something people look back on and kind of maybe club him in with Hitler but wow. uh, not like that at all yeah the same as St- Stalin and Hitler were both big fans and he sort of got fucked over just by them being fans imagine of just being a, a fan of somebody and then going Im- imagine going I'm a fan of Napoleon. I'm just going to start ruling swathes of Europe. Yeah. That's mental. Like. I think me being a really big fan of uh, the guy who sings with Paul Young and sends you Madonna and me trying to record music like him. You know what I mean? Get it's it like on Spotify. Yeah. It wouldn't be like his. Yeah. But, isn't it, but, like, but he would suffer because I had brought out music saying I was so influenced by him. People would then club him in with me. Oh, do you reckon, of, oh, do you reckon I can get clubbed in with Sting? If I just keep talking about how much he influences me. I could see you clubbing Sting and put him in the back of your pickup truck. I can see that happening at some point, like the film Misery. <laughs> Chloe just turned two blocks to his ankles and you, dem- you demand and he writes an, an, an EP with just you. Just me sitting there like Kathy Bates, yeah. but like, but her character in Titanic. Yeah. Big hat and all, you know? <laughs> Big Napoleon hat, yeah. We've tied it all in, yes. we've tied it all in. <laughs> and then you cutting off his cock. Yeah, yeah, I'll tell you, it's Napoleon's, it's, it stinks. Yeah. It would stink. Yay! Oh, okay. Here, do you need to know any more about Napoleon or have I covered it all with a lot, 70% of the help you, coming from you've, Dan? I think you've covered it, I think. I just wanted to go around a few, a lot of myths around him, but there's less myths around him because it's all there, all the history's there. The history's there, there yeah. yeah. And actually, there's some mad thing, like Napoleon's... Uh, Somebody close to Napoleon, a relative of Napoleon, um, I want to say his like auntie, great auntie. Or, there's this that fuck. I wish you knew. It'd be so impressive. She was around for the First World War. Someone really close to him. That was kind of probably the not end somebody of his, older than him. Then probably well, like a nephew or sorry, his 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 emperor <coughs> status and the fact that it was people from him that. That then took power. I think the last of those people was around for the First World War. Also, he got rid of the guillotine being used so freely. Right, okay. I think it was like before him, there was like 40,000 people a year or something getting guillotined Jesus, up. Jesus, just. With him, it was like, of unless you try to kill him, you weren't getting guillotined. Say nothing of the amount of flyers and posters they were using. <laughs> Thank you. Only guillotine. Dan? No, I couldn't find it. Ah, right, just just before it. we conclude, yes. he does appear in the Alexander Dumas book, The Count of Monte Cristo. As a small part, but like a key... Hey, we'll have to see it first for we... It's a key role where... um, What's that? 
You said small part. I was like, that's a Mikko right, Campos today. Right. We need to see it. But we um, will have it. Mandela Hall, 3rd of March. Napoleon's car. Live. We promise you. Either the, Napoleon's or Kieran's. Well, one and, or two, um, Pickle. Well, yeah. Small as each other. But the, the one... The Why am I doing that? The... <laughs> He appears in in that book, uh, and is kind of, so the main character, uh, they the the it start at the start of the book, the the main character is like a you know the first mate on a ship, and the captain goes down with like some fucking mystery disease, and when they go to basically bury him on the nearest island, they land at Elba, and he meets Napoleon, and there's a a a thing in the book then is like, did he take some fucking treasonous message from Napoleon to help Napoleon escape Elba. Peach Elba. And and then people fuck over that main character hard. Like he gets fucked over really hard. They put him on the prison island. Uh, and then the whole book is basically stems from that incident. And he then comes back, you know, the Count of Monte Cristo story where he comes back, does his big mad revenge. So good good times. The head of the Nepali soy boy is getting padded because you've, you. you've brought that together nicely. Um hope everybody now knows a lot more. I certainly do. About Napoleon. Yes. But great good character. Sound guy. Historical good guy? In a way, can we say someone who ruled like that and was involved with so many wars, can we say he was a good guy? Because there were some wars he was definitely responsible for. He might not have needed to Millions be involved in. Millions dead, like, usually points to rare guy. Hey, Georgie. Usually historical rare guy, yeah. Usually, yeah. usually. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, well, there you go. Bar Thank you for joining right. us for the first episode in the new series of Mysteries, and we'll see you at the live one in the Mandel Hall. Mm-hmm.